Well, good morning and welcome back to Musings of a Texas Preacher Man. I'm Scott Fisher and I'm glad you've chosen to study with me this morning. We've been looking at the transition from the Old Covenant to the New Covenant for the past several weeks. And if you've missed one of these episodes, it really would be important to go back and catch up. Now, this transition period was the 40 years between the crucifixion and resurrection of Jesus around 30 A.D. to the 70 A.D. destruction of Jerusalem in the temple. We've seen that Paul's teaching focused on Gentile believers, many of whom were being pressured to embrace the practice of Old Covenant Judaism as necessary for salvation. It's important to understand the context of his writings. Every Gentile city that he went into, he first went to the synagogue in an attempt to persuade Jews that Jesus was the fulfillment of the Old Covenant promise to the fathers and that his crucifixion and resurrection proved him to be their Messiah. But Paul's real focus was on reaching Gentiles with the gospel because he understood that the promise made to the fathers was going to open the way to God to all people everywhere. Paul viewed his ministry in the ingathering of Gentiles as a major prophetic fulfillment. In yesterday's video, we opened the door to discussing one of the major dilemmas of Paul's ministry. He understood that the the mystery of God, hidden from the ages, but now revealed to him, was, quote, that the Gentiles are fellow heirs and fellow members of the body and fellow partakers of the promise in Christ Jesus, through the gospel. That's Ephesians chapter 3 verse 6. Many of the Jewish believers were actually persecuting the Gentile believers because they believed it was necessary for the Gentiles to practice Judaism in addition to faith in Christ. The Gentiles, on the other hand, began to resent and even write off the Jewish believers because of the persecution they were facing from the Jews. How was God going to pull this off? How could Jew and Gentile become one in Christ? And it's into this dilemma that Paul writes the book of Romans. Throughout the book, he's building the case that both groups, whether Jew or Gentile, were dead in their sins, that there's no partiality with God. He establishes that the Gentile outreach of the gospel is a fulfillment of biblical prophecy And their inclusion in the kingdom is the mystery of God revealed to Paul and the other apostles. As Paul gets to Romans chapters 9 through 11, he establishes Israel's sin and for the most part their rejection of Jesus as Messiah and the fading glory of the old covenant and the superiority of the new covenant. But he also has to warn the Gentiles not to be arrogant toward the Jews. And he uses branches of the olive tree to describe what's actually taking place. In Romans 11, beginning at verse 17. But if some of the branches were broken off and you, being a wild olive, were grafted in among them and became partaker with them of the rich root of the olive tree, do not be arrogant toward the branches. But if you are arrogant, remember that it is not you who supports the root, but the root supports you. You will say then, branches were broken off so that I might be grafted in, and quite right. They were broken off for their unbelief. But you stand by your faith. Do not be conceited, but fear. For if God did not spare the natural branches, he will not spare you either. Behold then the kindness and the severity of God. To those who fell, severity. But to you, God's kindness, if you continue in his kindness. Otherwise, you also will be cut off. And they also, if they do not continue in their unbelief, will be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if you were cut off from what is by nature a wild olive tree, and were grafted contrary to nature into a cultivated olive tree, How much more will these who are the natural branches be grafted into their own olive tree? Now, here's some key points to this passage. Number one, the Jews are the natural branches. When Jesus sent out his 12 disciples, he gave them 
specific instructions. These 12 Jesus sent out after instructing them do not go in the way of the Gentiles and do not enter any city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Now, this is Matthew chapter 10, verses 5 through 7. Interestingly, Jesus walked right through the middle of Samaria and has an encounter with a Samaritan woman. And to her, he says in John chapter 4, you worship what you do not know. We worship what we know for salvation is from the Jews. John chapter 4, verse 22. And Paul stated in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. Now, I said it in a previous video. Salvation is of, by, and for the Jews. And as Gentiles, we are invited into what was theirs. We become partakers and sharers in their spiritual things. Number two, some of the natural branches were broken off. In fact, let's just be honest, most of them were because they refused to believe that Jesus was the promised Messiah, and some were broken off because they refused to acknowledge the glory of the new covenant over the fading glory of the old covenant. Then number three, and this is important, Gentiles are part of a wild olive tree, and they've been grafted into the rich root of God's olive tree. Number four, the Gentile believers are strongly warned not to be arrogant toward the natural branches. Why? In the same way the natural branches were broken off, these Gentile branches could be broken off. And then number five, the natural branches that were broken off because of their unbelief could also, if they do not continue in their unbelief, be grafted back into their own olive tree. And it was this hope that Paul was working toward, that as the Gentiles received the mercy of God, it would stir the hearts of his kinsmen according to the flesh to come to faith and repentance. Now, as we close this morning's study, once again, we, we must be reminded that the old covenant era came to an end with the destruction of Jerusalem and the temple. And that means that the new covenant era, the kingdom, the promise made to the fathers, the heavenly Jerusalem also came. And you and I, through faith in Jesus, are made citizens of his kingdom, and everything that was lost in Eden is now restored in Christ. And what does that mean? We have unhindered access to the presence of God. We have the glory of Jesus, and we are ambassadors of his kingdom, inviting all people everywhere to experience the life-transforming encounter and life with him. And that is the good news. Well, I want to thank you for studying with me this morning. And if, if what I'm sharing with you goes against what you've always believed, don't be afraid or intimidated. Let the scriptures be your source. We'll be picking up right here again tomorrow morning, and we'll be continuing in Romans chapter 11. Now, I want to thank you for joining me on Musings of a Texas Preacher Man. And I hope you'll continue to join me Tuesday mornings through Friday mornings each week right here as we continue to discover the truth of the Messianic Kingdom. I hope you'll click on the subscribe button on the lower right corner of your screen and you'll be notified in YouTube whenever a new video gets posted. And if you're watching on Facebook, consider sharing this on your wall with your friends and invite them to watch it. And if you saw it on Twitter, retweet it and encourage your friends to watch. If you live in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex, why not join me on Tuesday nights at 7 p.m. 
for Tuesday nights in the Word. That's right, during June and July, we're meeting on Tuesday nights. Hey, come out and join us. And I hope you'll go out and make today a great day.